is that, but it's always some type of information or it is some type of information that might assist, assist in some way um, later on. So it's a good idea to fill in everything that requires information in this section that you can. Um, the next section for diagnosis is, and condition, one of the most important factors that we um, talked about and looked at in this version is that we need to indicate what source the information came from. Um, it's not that we don't want any uh, documented assessment or evaluation done by the facility, but certainly if on an intake assessment when the facility is talking to the participant for the first time and finding out information um, such as that will help the nurse assessor during, during, during the interview, that's important information that documents someplace in the CEDT. And the last page of this, there is an information sheet that you can enter that information. But if things such as the, the brother knows more about this person than the sister, or there is nobody that is a caregiver for this person, or this person is hard of hearing on the right side, so you need to speak into the left side, that's all information that's pertinent to the assessment, but also to um, the care that the person may be receiving. So that's, you, you need to use common sense when you're getting the information. Um, the facility has information that may be helpful to you. What you don't want to do is get any preconceived diagnoses or ideas of what you're going to look at or zero in on on this person. You want to be open to anything that could be a problem that this person will be needing assistance with to remain in the community. Um, the diagnosis and, and conditions in Section A is a good indication of this piece. Sometimes you have past information to refer to. The person may bring a history and physical from the doctor. You may see information in the system that indicates what some of the diagnoses or conditions are with this person, or you may not have anything to refer to. Um, you do the best that you can if you have nothing. You observe, you listen, you hear, you smell, you see, you feel. With all your senses, you're assessing this person. And if you need to put down a diagnosis that is not a doctor or a medical person has made the diagnosis and you are um, thinking that maybe this person has something along those lines, if you see some indication of a cognitive involvement or dementia, then put it down, but put, put that it's from the face-to-face. -face. Put that it's from the medical record if it's in the history and physical or the primary caregiver or the caregiver. Enter where that information was located from or obtained from. That's very important in this instance because it will have to be confirmed later on by what comes to you in the form of the IPC. Medications is another one. Um, medications is always a different, difficult area to do, especially if you have someone that has 20 or 30 medications and they bring them to you in a bag um, and you're going to need to enter the inf information on a sheet. Hopefully when they have that many medications, they have a card um, with the type written medications they're taking or currently taking. But if you unfortunately do get stuck with one of those bags, you need to be um, cognizant of the fact that sometimes those prescriptions have expired. Um, is there a reason for that expiration? Is lack of payment? The person doesn't believe in the medication. They don't like the side effects. That's all. A, a, there are all places where you can gain information about the person and how maybe they need assistance in their home environment. Um, you also want to write down what the medication is and depending on what the medication is, whether or not you want to put the dosage down is important. If it's something that's being taken four times a day as opposed to once a day, that is important. How much medication assistance would this person need if they were taking two medications once a day as opposed to somebody that was juggling 15 and some of them were one time a day and some of them were four times a day. So those are things that you need to look for in the medication area. And we've given um, a lot of spaces to both these sections, but it is possible to go over this amount. And if you need to, um, we did have problems with the, our original version and that people would put notes on the back of the piece of paper. That didn't work so well when these were copied and that information was on the back and it didn't get copied over. So now we suggest that on that last page, page 7, I believe it is, excuse me, page 10, is a comment page. 
And if you just continue on or put a continue in the diagnosis section on page 10 and keep on writing on the comment page, then you know for sure when this goes into the copy machine that it'll be copied. Um, the, the rest of the sections in this area are pretty self-explanatory. We try to capture the most common reasons that a person ends up um, requiring CVAP services, but there's not enough room to, of course, put everything, so we left spaces for you to explain or to indicate other uh, problems that we haven't identified. We try to put the um, issues in the boxes logically together so that as you're going through, you can kind of go through the different systems of the the body and get all the information at one time. We were a little more um, uh, intense with the endocrine system, of course, diabetes being the big one in that area. But if there is some other type of um, situation or, or condition going on, you can always put that in the explain box. Um, very important to document or indicate any kind of wounds, bruising, skin abrasions, rashes, anything that you see that's out of the ordinary for the person. Or if you don't see anything out of the ordinary to indicate that. A lot of times when someone else is coming behind you and going through these CEDTs and they don't see anything written down, it becomes a question of did you miss it or did you just not feel it was important or what, what was the deal? So you indicate if everything is within normal limits, such as in box six, or not applicable, just indicate somewhere that you did observe this box and there was nothing out of the normal. Um, box six, of course, has a lot more things added into it. We try to follow the criteria um, in the Welfare and Institution Code as far as like what these conditions, what the common conditions would be that might lead to CBAS, the need for CBAS. Um, in seven, we added cognitive and behavioral factors because the dementia stages and the areas where the uh, person's personal habits or any kind of mental health illness weren't quite captured if they had obvious things such as self-neglect or aggressive behavior or substance, of course, substance abuse you're not going to so much see, but you may get an inkling of it as you're talking with a person. And the more you go through this CEBT and the more assessments that you do, the more this is going to become information or you're going to pick up things that are, you get from the conversation, not so much from the direct questions, but from a conversation or leading the person off into an area where they don't feel like they're being interrogated, where it does become, um, you know, maybe even just a simple question about the, how is the weather outside or do you walk outside in the rain or something like that to lead them on to, you know, I don't really walk outside anymore, I can't walk without my walker or... I tend to trip so I don't go outside, those kind of things where the person is answering questions but it's not a direct going with step by step through the CEDT. Um, medication management, we left a lot of space for. That's a big area that there are issues with. Um, of course, uh, section B indicates the multiple me medications. In this section, it, it indicates more of what the need is going to be with those medications. Um, is the person forgetful? Do they, can they not afford the copay? Um, do they don't believe in, in taking medication or are there side effects that are bothering them? We gave um, boxes for those choices and then we gave a large box for an explanation area. And this is where you want to explain what the medication issues are so that when you get to the criteria, you've already started to confirm one of the needs for CVAS services. And that's what's kind of based on all the information that you're gathering behind part one is you're going to uh, lead off into part two where the criteria starts to meet up with what you found in your assessment. ADLs and IEDLs on page four, we simplified that. You either need help or you don't, it's yes or no. And you want to explain where you got that information from and what you saw that confirms or substantiates it. You don't want to go into a lengthy description, but you do want to indicate um, ambulation if they're unsteady but ambulate without any assistance. Um, they're not really independent, but they're not really um, 
using anything, but you can see that they need assistance, so you would want to put something down in there to explain that basis. Bathing, um, dressing, feeding, toileting, transferring, any kind of information that you can glean and who you're getting it from, whether it be the caregiver, the person themselves, um, and of course, always indicate if you do have a translator, which would be back in box one, you would have put the preferred language um, but if there is a translator that is from the facility, indicate that somewhere on this document. Um, additional IEDL exceptions, transportation, accessing resource, meal preparation, and money man management, they've been included in here too as an indication or as something, um, additional information that will lead to um, an evaluation or a recommendation at the end for one of these categories of um, needs. Additional support information in Section G. This is nice information to have. It can assist with a, a lot of things. For instance, if the person is receiving so many hours per month of IHSS and they still have a need, that, a need that's not being met, um, you want to indicate that. Um, certainly, IHSS does not preclude CBAS. Um, there's many things that IHSS does not cover, and this person may need um, that additional support to remain in the community.